P-Fest is a 24-hour bad movie film festival held on Northwestern University's campus. But for those of us who have attended for years and years and years, it's a chance to hit the road and catch up with old friends and share in common interests. I've been to B-Fest for seven years, and while it's a blast, every time I go, it has to be said this isn't something normal people do. When I talk to people about B-Fest, they think it's a great idea. Yay, 24 hours in a theater. Let me tell you, it's an endurance test. It takes a special breed to take that much punishment. Normal people, they'll watch a movie and then get back to their hobbies or their jobs. We tend to do things like make fun of Tor Johnson and sponsor heart beeps. Since I've been going for seven years, we pretty much have a routine developed that involves getting lost at one point, but GPS kind of helped that out a little bit. So we borrow a car and we head east, and we always stop at a particular McDonald's in Iowa City that has the creepiest Ronald McDonald statue you've ever seen. Hi, Matt. I'm the Wooden Ronald. You didn't come visit me this year. I'm going to haunt your dreams. <laughs> yeah, real mature. Anyway, once we get to Chicago, we meet up with members of the Bad Movie Message Board, or BMMB, for some nice greasy food, and then we usually congregate at a tiki bar called the Halakihiki, where all manner of serious and intellectual discussions result. Actually, if anybody else can remember Juniper's point about feminist Godzilla and the and the uh, the the phallic authority of the Tokyo buildings, I didn't read that. Paper, <laughs> I, didn't I remember that all too well. I had a, I had a fresh so seat for that. Indeed, yes. There we go. And the high pitch, the high pitch roar of feminine Godzilla's penis. The high pitch roar of feminine liberation. That was Juniper's argument. But we're all here to see the movies, and this year the fine folks at A&O Films came through in grand style with their usual degree of professionalism and poise. Uh, oh, hi, organizers! Just to know, if you had a pounce wrap call, it's all good to have got new pounce set up, so we apologize in advance for any unforeseen technical difficulties. Let's get started right up now. We have a couple masks film this year was Crippled Masters, or a guy with no arms and a guy with no legs team up to fight a guy with a giant metal hump. Now the strange thing about this movie is aside from the sideshow elements, it really is your standard kung fu movie, and if you've seen a kung fu movie ever in your life, you know exactly where it's going. That's not a bad thing, but you maybe expect a little bit of innovation from the no arms, no legs thing. I don't know. Real quick, what did you just see? Uh, I saw The Legend of Crippled Master. Which was how what? Uh, basically, somewhere between tasteless and fucking awesome is The Crippled Master. It's how a one-legged man wins an ass-kicking contest. It's how a no-legged man wins an ass-kicking contest. <laughs> Next up is Heartbeeps, a terrible comedy in which Andy Kaufman forever cedes his claim to edgy genius status by starring as a robot who likes to stare at weather, which he does for about an hour and a half. After being prodded by a robot who sucks the life out of his victims through poor vaudevillian humor, he walks around and is chased by Randy Quaid. It bears mentioning that this awful, awful film was sponsored by Ed McNeely, and the crowd really understood where he was coming from. Kata was up next, and it's one of my favorite kinds of B-movies because in between all the bad acting and awful fashion and obviously terrible fight choreography is a kernel of something interesting. Our hero is playing a game of death and has to fight his way through a town full of insane people who do some seriously creepy things and chase him with sharp farm implements. It's one of those nuggets that you find in the middle of a movie that just makes you go, huh, really wish they'd developed that more. But it was interesting with what they did, and it was a pretty good movie for B-Fest. Remember what I said about the folks who go to B-Fest not being like normal people? Hey, I've got some proof. magical 
who that was? <laughs> God, it's midnight. It means we have to watch Plan 9 again. Out of all the movies that have ever existed, Plan 9 from Outer Space is probably the movie I've seen most in the theater, and that fact doesn't make me terribly happy. What I do like is participating in the plate throwing, the yelling, and all the other festivities that go with it. At this point, it's kind of like Christmas. You know, the magic died a while ago, but you can go through the motions nonetheless. my best friend. Shall we throw the football around? Oh man, the room was great. Not only is it the B-movie du jour right now, one a lot of B-movie fans are discovering, but it is a rockin', rockin' crowd movie. People had a really good time. And it features a main character who, once he starts talking, A, you try to figure out what accent he has, and the other thing is you can't stop talking like him. It's like an infection. You just start talking like Tommy Wiseau and you can't stop. You have to go to rehab afterward. Anyway, here's an example of how Tommy Wiseau talks, and uh, see for yourself, but be, be careful, it's addictive. Oh, sorry, that was Tommy was so shooting himself again. <laughs> I just kind of like that part. Things get groggy after this point, but I'll try to remember as best I can. The next movie, movie was Hard Ticket to Hawaii, an Andy Sedaris flick with copious amounts of boobs guns, and muscle men blowing up snakes with bazookas. That really is all you have to say about the movie, although it was pretty entertaining and the crowd seemed to enjoy it. I enjoyed it. For the guns and boobs. At this point in the festivities, the filmmakers pulled an audible. They were going to show Sextet, which I was hoping to sleep through. So I went up to the second floor and found a nice, comfortable chair and shut my eyes for an hour or so. When I came back, I had missed Black Shampoo, which looked just fantastic. If you haven't seen the trailer, look it up on YouTube. It's really worth it. And it looks uh, looks like a really decent exploitation mo or black exploitation movie for this year. But I missed it. My big regret of the fest. I was up in Adam for the adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, and man, who among us has not seen this movie a dozen times? It's a really enjoyable movie and a real nice palate cleanser after some of the dreck we had sat through earlier. And one of the things that struck me watching it again was just how freaking young Peter Weller is. Look at that guy, man. He, it was just great to see him and, and great to see this movie again. It was like revisiting an old friend since the last time I saw this movie. I was maybe 17 years old, something like that. Just a really fun experience, and I liked it. What I didn't like was Troll 2. Troll 2 is often called one of the worst movies of all time. I've seen much worse, but what it is is annoying. Uh, the the <laughs> makeup effects are not very good. And this kid, oh, this kid, uh, is some kids you just want to slap, you know, or you hope the trolls eat him. This took a deadly turn for me where at the end, I, I just wanted him to go away. And it's, you know, when, when you're in, a, in the middle of a movie and you just lose all interest, that's worse than hating everybody in the movie. You know, I hate it when I lose interest because that's a sign of a movie that's just really not doing a thing. 